Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna do a makeup tag video. It's the 21 questions started by Allie Glines here on YouTube. Over a month ago, my friend uh, Mel C, she has a channel on YouTube as well. I will put her information below so you guys can go check out her channel. Um, she did this tag and encouraged me to give it a try because it's a lot of fun. And I did have a lot of fun watching her video and listening to her answers to these questions. Uh, and just a couple of weeks ago, Ali Chase, uh, also on YouTube, uh, tagged me to do this video. So here we are, let's get right into the questions. The number one question is, what is the oldest makeup product in your collection? Um, I've had makeup products prior to my last declutter. Maybe they were like eight years old, 10 years old even, just ancient. I got them a long, long time ago and just never had the heart to throw them out. Um, so what I have in my collection that is the oldest at this time is going on six years now and I've stopped using it a couple of years ago um, but just don't have the heart to declutter um, and to throw them away. But this is going to be the Bite Lipstick and this lipstick here in particular with this shape and let's see what they called this uh, this was their oh buttercream lipstick and in the shade Heather so it's a very creamy lipstick and it wears uh, very comfortably which is how I got into bite lipstick um, was because it's creamy and it had like food grade ingredients you know that was the marketing language around the product um, I wanted to talk about the shape of this lipstick because it dates it. Um, we know, or if you are into Bite lipsticks or were at one point, you know this was from some time ago because eventually they switched to this shape. Still kind of same um, texture, this, this sort of uh, matte, soft texture, and they always had this magnetic enclosure previously, but then they switched to a click closure. I have, since they came out with this, I've gotten, I think, all of their shades. Because one Christmas, they released a vault, uh, which was like miniature lipsticks of all of their shades. I think it was maybe 30 shades in total. Hold on, let me show you because I still have it. Couldn't bring myself to declutter that either. This is their vault collection. And I guess when I got this, it's actually not the Luminous Cream Lipstick. They're called the Amuse Bush. Uh, which is the name of the line, 38 shades in total. Uh, some of the lipsticks or shades, I don't know where they went. You know, I might have thrown one or two into my purse, like my favorite ones, but they have this printed here of all the shades, and then you got the minis. So some of them here might be in a purse somewhere. Uh, I know I've given one away before too, but I just loved having this because you can mix and match. You can layer different shades together to create a new shade. And then there was just everything. There were deep shades like black truffle, for example, and then there were bright, bright shades like gin fizz. Um, this bright shade kimchi and then gin fizz right here. It definitely looks brighter when I <laughs> when I look at it like this rather than on camera. But it just kind of had everything and it seemed like it was a lot of fun. I did get use out of it, but I probably didn't experiment uh, as much as I thought I would or as much as I wanted to. All right, moving on to the next question. What is your most recent makeup purchase? My most recent purchase is going to be Viseart's Lettre d'Amour Paris. And it's Paris Love Letter. I recently did a review video and created a look with this. This is a beautiful spring palette. It's not too cool, it's not too warm, just kind of in between. Um, when you swatch the shades, that's when I, or that's when I really fell in love with it, when I swatched the shades um, to see what they were like. Just really, really beautiful, um, stunning color payoff and finishes. What is the first makeup product you ever used? I don't recall, but it, it's got to be lipstick because according to my mom, and she told me this story recently, um, I was absolutely obsessed with lipstick. Like the lipsticks my aunt would, would have. You know, when I watched them put on lipstick, I would just, you know, glued to them. And then I would, um, this was, I don't remember this, but I would try to kiss them. <laughs> 
<laughs> after they put their lipstick on because like I wanted I wanted some lip color um, and then she also told me that I would take their lipstick if I could I would take their lipstick and put it on as well so I would imagine the first makeup product I've used uh, as a very very young girl uh, was lipstick what is a makeup trend that you used to love but now hate I can't think of a makeup trend I hate I guess I guess a trend that I enjoyed and I wouldn't say loved but I enjoyed uh, and now not so much is the the extremely highlighted look so the glow within all over glow look I still really like and there are you know still a lot of products that can help you get there um, a lot of the models we see still have a very glowing look but the glow is less like right in your face because it's like all of this highlight on the high points of the cheeks no you know uh, it's a little bit more yeah it's a little bit more subtle and I prefer now the more subtle glow within combo with the uh, highlighter on the high point you know all those areas I just prefer more of a natural glow within and then add in highlighter on top of that if you want the, the major effect what is a makeup trend that you used to hate but now love? That's a tough question. There is really no makeup trend that I hate. There is one that I cannot see myself trying, and I'm not even sure I've tried it at this point. So this is um, the grungy punk or grungy cyberpunk look with thin eyebrows and a really dramatic lip and I just never saw myself being able to pull that off um, I naturally don't have thin brows and there was just <laughs> no way I was going to um, try to attempt that by plucking because um, once you pluck those brows there's no guarantee they're gonna come back um, yeah so so that was that look that grungy or punk or cyberpunk look that I never thought I could pull off um, therefore I think in my mind I was just never really a fan of it although when I look back at some you know editorials from models like they look amazing with that look uh, maybe it was just really difficult to pull off um, now it's not that I love it but I am very open or I am actually working towards getting more lipstick shades that are deeper than what I would prefer so previously I would not even wear a lipstick shade like this uh, this kind of terracotta is still too dramatic for me like I I didn't have the look or the rest of my makeup to pull this off so this already is much deeper than what I used to wear regularly um, even from like five or six years ago when I had my bite lipstick phase uh, I would stick with the pinks and nude shades maybe sometimes uh, something that was like a fuchsia or had a bit of purple in it but the browns the the deeper reds yeah that that was not in my wheelhouse um, but now I'd love to try deep purples deep browns uh, you know just deeper shades overall and and so that's probably the closest I can get in terms of like hate versus love the next question what is your favorite step in your makeup routine for a long time and this is still true for the most part is uh, eye makeup I am very meticulous about my eye makeup and I'm always trying to improve and get better at it uh, when I had the chance to work with makeup artists regularly I would just pepper them with questions like what did you use here like why did you use that brush um, you know how do I how do I place this color to look like this or my most frequent comment was oh I can never get it to look like this and you know and then they would give me some tips to show me so eye makeup is definitely the step that I enjoy the most because I'm always trying to improve or uh, go out of my comfort zone and do something different uh, now I think that spotlight is shared with lipstick um, I do especially with this expanded lipstick collection um, I really enjoy picking out a lipstick to go with my look and when it is a great match it just gives me a lot of satisfaction from putting it on to you know that first like finish moment of seeing if it matches 
um, I really do enjoy that a lot. What is a makeup product you can't live without? Concealer. I have deep under eye circles, uh, redness, so I mean typical redness around the nose, but I find that the biggest transformation for me is concealer and then eye makeup. So if I had to choose between eye makeup and concealer, it's gonna be concealer, for sure. What sparked your love for makeup? I don't remember. I don't remember the moment or moments in my formative years where I thought, like, this is it. This is why I love makeup and why I'm gonna eventually start a YouTube channel, you know. Um, it must have to do with the whole uh, transformation because I loved dressing up in costumes and uh, I mean, a lot of kids did that. Dressing up in costumes, playing house or playing characters. But to me, a full transformation, a transformation is not complete without makeup. Whether that was um, uh, stage makeup, like Halloween makeup, uh, clown makeup, you know, it's just like, it's makeup in general, whatever you need to apply on your face to complete your transformation. You know, the outfit comes after, it's the makeup first. That's how I've always thought of it. So I think it was a combination of um, the idea of transformation, like when you played as a kid and you imagined yourself to be somebody or doing something. Um, typically there was like the thought of makeup in mind. And then I'm sure as I got older and started seeing or recognizing models like through magazines or um, ads or seeing my mom's makeup, uh, I think that just fostered my interest in it more and more. What is the worst makeup look you've ever done? It's got to be something where I, you know, I had like red lips or very dramatic lipstick because for some time, I always thought I shouldn't and I couldn't wear uh, like red lipstick, dramatic lipstick because I couldn't pull it off because I have these full lips and it just looked like, that's it, red. And you know, it would be very unflattering. Um, up until maybe eight years ago, I recognized that that's one opinion, right? That I, full lips, you shouldn't wear anything that would accentuate, like further accentuate it. And that's when I ventured into like neon lipsticks um, and, and just tried different things and realized I can pull it off. Like with the right makeup, outfit, totally I can pull it off. Um, it's not something I would wear every day, but I had a lot of fun doing it. And growing up, my parents never made me feel self-conscious about my full lips. Uh, in fact, my, my dad would point out to me, uh, he would say, look what's in style now, it's models with full lips, and that's what you have. So uh, thank you, thank you to dad and, and mom for <laughs> helping me build confidence in my full lips. But yeah, uh, I, I would imagine until I got to that point, I always avoided, you know, a really dramatic lipstick for that reason. So I would think my worst makeup look that maybe I've conveniently erased uh, <laughs> from my memory uh, involves something like that. What is your favorite makeup look you've ever done? This is really hard to like that you've ever, like your most favorite, I don't know. I hope my most favorite look has not come to be just yet. <laughs> it would give me motivation and hope that I would continue to improve my skills and then I would get the most favorite <laughs> sometime from now. Um, I did do a look last year uh, that really surprised me and I had never imagined myself to um, do that type of look. And it wasn't even something conscious. Maybe that's why it's memorable and that's what makes it cool is it wasn't really planned. I just wanted to try this, these few things. Um, and when I put them together, it turned out really well. And I've never looked like that before uh, with makeup. I'll put a picture here. And it's, it's with this bright, you know, red, orange lipstick. Uh, I was very tan because I was outside a couple times a week for like at least an hour to two hours a day. Um, and it just worked really well. Like that lip color, 
um, with the skin tone. I, I just absolutely loved it. And then the glow, that kind of natural all over glow, or look like natural, it, it wasn't. Um, it, <laughs> it's from makeup. It just made it look, it just made it look really nice. And, and that's my favorite so far, my favorite makeup look. What is your favorite drugstore makeup product? I have two. One of them is Bioderma's Makeup Remover Solution. This is Solution Micellar. Uh, I've used this for over 10 years. And it, it just, it works for eye makeup, face makeup. It's not the strongest uh, makeup remover. So if you have lots of, like a heavy eyeshadow look and you have lash glue and all that, there are some better makeup removers to help you, like heavy duty. Um, but this is all around, like, all around performer and it's very affordable and you also don't necessarily have to wash your face after you use this, which is extremely helpful when you're in a pinch, like you don't have enough time. Depending, like even when I do videos and I have some swatches that are tough to get off, I'll just use this uh, and quickly, you know, wipe off and then come back and, you know, film the rest of it. So I, I love this and I absolutely will continue to use it. The other product is a Japanese drugstore product. It is called um, Heroin Make Smooth Liquid Eyeliner. I don't know that they have a shade. This is black, but I don't know if they have it in brown. I wanna say they do. And uh, this came highly recommended from makeup artists um, that I've worked with so you can build to get a deeper color payoff. It's not quite as deep as say, Pat McGrath, for example. So this is Pat McGrath with one swipe. I did about three here. What's nice about the Heroin Make eyeliner is how fine the tip is. It just, if you're looking for something um, detailed and small, easy to work with, this is a great, eyeliner. It also works really well for people with oily lids. It stays on, it doesn't budge. I've also used this when I was on jobs too, uh, modeling, and it, would, it, would, it wouldn't budge, and I was in a very humid climate too. <laughs> so uh, it's a great product, even though I haven't been using much these days. In the past 10 years, I've always had one on hand for that reason. What is your favorite splurge makeup product? You know, when I look around, I think it's got to be these brushes. I mean, the holder, the brush holder itself is a collector's item. It's handmade, really special. Um, this is a splurge. I mean, you could have a very nice um, acrylic holder, you know, your favorite mug or a cute mug could also hold your brushes, but I have this, you know, this holder here. Um, so definitely everything you see here is really a, a splurge. And, um, you know, gotta pace myself. Like I want another set of brushes already, but gotta pace myself. And I had to pick like one item that really is a splurge. I would say, you know, these collector brushes. <laughs> Um, they're from Beautylish. They're they're released every year uh, for Lunar New Year. So uh, last year, 2020, is Year of the Rat. This year is uh, Year of the Ox. And these two are the same brush, like same specs, everything. Just designs different. And I, you know, got a second one. So definitely, definitely a splurge. What is your most repurchased makeup product? Oh, it's got to be this makeup remover most purchased. What is your earliest makeup memory? My earliest memory is uh, when I was a flower girl in my aunt's wedding and I remember looking in the mirror after they were done, like maybe getting out of the chair and then going and looking in the mirror. Um, so that is my earliest makeup memory was uh, as a flower girl or getting ready to be a flower girl for my aunt. What is your favorite place to shop for makeup? Uh, it's gonna be mostly online. <laughs> just all online in many different places. Uh, Sephora it is one place I shop at often, followed by uh, a number of different websites. Like most recently I've ordered a lot from Dior, Dior's website, 
and uh, self ridges for Suku and I do enjoy ordering off of self ridges because they're, they're quick they're quick to process the order shipping is reliable it's quick it gets here in a couple of days all the way from across the ocean so um, yeah those are probably most recently anyways the three places I go to uh, to shop for makeup what is the most underrated makeup product you own I'm going to go out on a limb here and throw this out I don't think people who have this um, are not underrating this in any way in fact anybody who has this um, that I've seen have just raved about it they love it and yet it is still in stock <laughs> It is the Sonia G Kayaki brush set. Uh, these are her traveling sets, so the brushes, the handles are a lot shorter than Sonia G's, you know, other brush sets. But they are of the same kind of quality, and I just, I find them to be, uh, like the other brushes, very versatile. But she included these two new brushes. These shapes are not found anywhere else in her collection. These three are. These two are not. This is a brush you can use for liquid, cream, and powder products, but I use it to blend in concealer. It's wonderful. And then this is good for um, face powder. You can use it for blush, you can use it for highlight. Uh, I use it to set powder under my eyes because it's just that right size. I can't believe it's still in stock. I'm fairly certain that they didn't get a huge shipment of this initially. Maybe they got a second shipment, I don't know. But it was never, I don't think it was ever out of stock because I think if it was out of stock and they got a second shipment, um, Beatlish and Sonya G would actually make an announcement of it, but I, I did not see any announcement. So the fact this is still in stock and this set, so five brushes, which um, in all of Sonya G's other sets, it's typically, well, face sets um, and then eye sets, like those sets individually are also five brushes. This is the most affordable set at $125. Um, these ones here, the Pro Eye Set is $160, $175, something like that. The face sets are about the same. So, I'm just really surprised. Maybe it has to do with how like the handles are really small and people feel like, you know, if I'm gonna invest in a Sonya G brush set, it's gonna be the the full size. This is where you can really get a, a sense of Sonya G's style and her quality. Uh, and this wood here is specialty wood and it's highly prized. So yeah, I think it's underrated if you don't have it. If you have it, I think everybody loves it. So the, that's my choice for most underrated makeup. What is the most overrated makeup product you own? This is a tough one. You know, I am fairly picky about what I purchase to uh, share with you guys on this channel. And as such, I think I've bypassed a lot of, um, perhaps overrated makeup or, or makeup that is actually good, but it's just so, they have so much more hype around it. Wow, th this one took me a while. Uh, I'll go with the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palettes, the six pans. Um, these are released uh, usually annually, uh, right around the holidays. This is the Ghost Edit Palette. Uh, and then I bought a six pan release last year, 2020, in Sculpture. I like Sculpture better than Ghost. Um, this was my first ambient lighting six pan palette and I enjoyed it enough, but I haven't really gone back in. The moment I got another uh, finishing powder, bronzer, you know, more blushes and, and highlights I enjoy more, I stopped grabbing for this palette. So I guess they are overrated in the sense that they're very popular and you know people really are very interested in them every single year when they come out with the six pans because i'm not grabbing for them it gives me the sense that it's a bit overrated but truly i don't know i don't know that there are people who feel like wow you cannot you know this is like i must have this like you must have this so i think that's very very subjective i think my choice here is extremely subjective and this is 
the two side by side. This is Sculpture and Ghost. Um, if you are interested in a, you know, a direct comparison, I do actually have a video on this. I will link it above. What is a discontinued makeup product you wish would come back? Prior to starting a makeup channel, I did not purchase as much makeup. Uh, I really liked makeup and I was getting into like high-end eyeshadows uh, or luxury eyeshadows like Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath. So I was kind of getting into it, but I did not, um, I mean, I did not plan to purchase as much makeup as I have now. And so I was not really exposed to that many different brands and types of makeup. So I don't really miss anything in particular. Uh, what I do miss is solely from listening or watching other people's videos on makeup they really wish would come back. And uh, I think Coco Mirage by Tom Ford, I hope I have the name right. That is the uh, Tom Ford quad. All four shades are matte and people are Obsessed, like head over heels in love, extremely upset <laughs> that that was discontinued. So, uh, you know, I would have to say while there are some really good matte shadow options, like dupes you can find, but having that combined into one quad it, it, and how it just takes people's breaths away, like, I want to see what that's all about. So I guess that would be my choice for discontinued makeup that I wish they would bring back. Where do you go for makeup inspiration? It used to be magazines, uh, looking at the models and you know trying to see how how did they make them so that their skin would glow this way, or how do they make it so that the <laughs> eyeshadow was so even on both eyes? <laughs> like, oh, the brows look so good, they look so even, they fit the model's face and frames their face so well. Uh, yes, magazine photos are uh, airbrushed and they're touched up, but the makeup still came through, and that's where I used to look for inspiration. These days it's Instagram and it's such a great platform for so many people, budding makeup artists or um, you know makeup artists that you may not have heard of because uh, there's only so many featured in magazines. So uh, definitely online, Instagram, that's, that's the number one place. What do you hope to see less of in makeup's future? We've come so far from this, but I think it's still worth mentioning and is top of mind less harmful ingredients, um, less unnatural ingredients. Now, would we ever go 100% natural um, or even 100% certified organic? Probably not. Uh, there are some chemicals uh, that are not natural that just makes makeup work better. And at low levels, um, it truly, is not or may not be harmful to people. Um, I'm not gonna be an expert here because I don't have the background for it and I don't have you know all the information, but I do think we can get so much better in terms of our ingredients, the safety, uh, the accountability, where the ingredients are sourced. Uh, I do wanna see less of those uh, ingredients that can be replaced by something better, so. I really want to see less of that in the future. What do you hope to see more of in makeup's future? More innovation. Right now, and I think this is fairly normal, I don't think this will go away, is a brand will release something. And if it's popular, soon all the other brands will do the same. The number one thing that comes to mind is hybrid lipsticks. So the lipstick lip gloss or lipstick lip balm, like hydrating, glossy lipsticks, uh, we are seeing every brand now releasing a line of lipsticks just like that. No complaints from me because I'll be trying most of those, uh, most of those lipsticks that are coming out uh, in the near future. Uh, but we could use more innovation um, and that's always exciting. Try something totally new that we haven't experienced before uh, or maybe we didn't know we needed. So more innovation, I'd love to see that in the future. That is all the questions. Thank you for watching. If you are a beauty enthusiast, you have your own channel or uh, you're on Instagram, uh, try out this tag. I tag you. I tag you because it's fun and I love to 
uh, see what your answers are, you know, what your favorites are, what do you hate, what do you love now? Uh, those are those were difficult to answer. But um, yeah, so thanks for the tag, Allison. I will also have Allison Chase's um, channel link below. See you guys in the next one. Hope your week is going well. Bye.